All right, what is up? We have all of our gear we are using to climb Everest. It's about $20,000 worth, so just gonna go in depth here, gonna go over everything, probably start from the cheapest stuff and kind of work up to what the most expensive things are, because hey, mountaineering is probably one of the most expensive sports in the world. So um, here, we gotta do this first. Uh, let's see. Ow, really? There's a cat on all of it. Just bit me. Okay, first of all, you know what? Let's start off with uh, some of the clothing, I'd say. Um, I don't know the exact price point of a lot of these, but I know roughly how much most of this costs. So, I mean, these right here, there's some funny looking boots, right? They're just some booties. Um, when you're in the tents at whatever, however many thousand feet, and it gets so cold to the point where you can't even sleep because your feet are freezing. So you have these booties, they keep them nice and, and warm. Probably, I think, $100, so kind of interesting. Um, I'm not gonna go too depth into the clothes because at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter what type of clothes you get. Um, basically, in terms of shells, I have like a very soft shell, hard shell right here. Um, not anything crazy, it's like, I'll just kind of run down three pairs of underwear. And then you have two heavyweight underwear. It's just like long underwear. Um, and you know, you got these, you got the fleece. I like the little Patagonia fleece we got going here. All of these, it's kind of expensive, the clothes actually, just the, even like the underwear. Cause they're using pretty um, hard to get materials of course. Cause it's like, it has to be wool. You can't use cotton cause it's not gonna dry. It's not gonna keep you warm. Um, even like these socks, these are just the, the classic socks, right? I think per pair, these are darn tough, it's like $40 for some socks. So, hey, you gotta do what you gotta do to stay warm up there. Um, anyways, uh, I guess we'll go into, I wanna save like this stuff, cause this stuff's fun to look at. Some of this stuff's kind of boring. So we'll go into the, the hiking shoes I wear, cause basically you're not always climbing in We'll go into these bad boys in a second, but you have to trek into base camp. You're gonna be using some regular shoes. I forget exactly the name of these, but like they're with Sportiva. You can't go wrong with any of their hiking shoes, really. These have seen miles elevation. So, and, and they're doing really well. So I think these are around 170, something like that. So nothing crazy yet. We haven't really gotten to the really expensive stuff. Um, we'll go into the pants, because we looked at the tops. So the, the three pants that you, you kind of wear. So besides just for normal hiking pants, which isn't that interesting, uh, we got the Gore-Tex, of course. The Gore-Tex pants, these are just warm. <laughs> it's, not, it's not like anything really crazy. Those are probably 100 something. These are the insulated pants. These are actually elite. These things you will you will cook. If I got in these right now, I'd probably die because of how warm they are. So there's like cat fur all over them too. As you saw, they keep it extra warm. Cats are like two hundred dollars or something. Um, very warm pants, and then of course a little bit of rain pants. So you kind of see how it goes in in line here. We had the rain jacket, rain pants. We'll see the big jacket soon, but we have the big pants, and then of course we had those Gore-Tex pants, which. For one, and kind of what the material is. It's just like a very much wind resistant material. Um, keep you warm because at the end of the day, when you're up there, it's not really the cold air that, that gets you, it's the wind. Um, that's what's gonna give you frostbite. And of course, it gets really harsh up, up on Everest because it's so exposed. There's nothing covering that winds coming to get you. So yeah, it's gonna get a little breezy up there. So you need you need kind of need conditions, layers for every condition. Um, here we are. So that's kind of the clothes. So just about those, just like the normal clothes you would wear, underwear, rain jacket, maybe Gore-Tex pants. It's a couple thousand. Um, you have to buy so much different ones, but it's just how it is. So next, yeah, this is probably next up in the price range, I would say. Of course, so you need goggles and then glasses or else you will go snow blind. So we just have like a pair of nice Oakleys right here. I think they're re the reactive, yeah, Prism reactive Oakleys. Very solid. Um, if there's a snowstorm, you would probably use those or if for some reason you lost your glacier glasses, 
or if it's really windy and you need to keep the wind out of your eyes. And of course, just the normal jewel bow. I think these are the Explorer 2.0s. I f just feel like that's the name. These these are expensive. These glasses and goggles, like, I think these were 200 something. And then the goggles, like 250 easily. So they get kind of expensive, but you gotta protect your eyes because the snow, you don't realize how bright snow is. If you have snow on your ground outside, go out and just look at it in the sun. You can't stare at it, you will go blind. So you need to invest in that. See, the thing is, of course, all this costs a lot, but you're investing in your in your health and your life. So, granted, you didn't have to take the risk to begin with, but hey, you know what? We do it different. So, um, that's kind of that stuff. And then here we'll we'll just look at this quickly. Water bottle parkas are actually pretty expensive. So, as you can see, these Nalgene's, just liter Nalgene bottles, probably like twenty five dollars. Of course, you have to keep them warm though, because they'll freeze up there. So you'd be surprised. And these are, these 40 below ones are probably like $70, $60 for a little parka for your water bottle. It keeps them warm though. Like your water's not gonna freeze with these, so. Very worth it. Um, and have another one, this is an outdoor research one. You usually will bring two liters of water and then you'll also bring a thermos, which two and a half just about of water, which is usually what I do even on long days drink half a liter every break. I mean, what does that, what does that give you? Like five, five breaks. Sometimes do a third, stretch it out a little bit more. So you can get like five or more breaks. And then of course, usually if you're going for a long time, you would stop for water. So I don't know, I just, some people bring three liters of water. It's just, a, 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 that's just a lot. It's excessive to carry in your pack. So, um, you know, we don't usually do that much. All right. So that was probably the cheaper end of things. The underwear, the socks, and everything. Um, before we get to, actually, no, we got some other stuff. So you might be wondering how you sleep. So I also have two duffels over here, but that's not whatever. Um, you sleep on the ground, essentially. So you throw down this thingy, which is like the styrofoam thing. Makes a little bit salt softer. A little bit more insulated for you to get a nice, nice rest. And then on top of this, because it would suck to just sleep on that, you have a literal blow-up mattress. It fits right in this thing. The beautiful thing about Mountaineer gear is it all fits. Just you can like, it's just the art of squishing things down as much as you can. So it's called a Therma Rest. I know the these are probably like a couple hundred dollars, few hundred dollars combined. But yeah, I mean you blow these up, put it in the tents, you leave, you squish it back up. It's just like a little mattress literally um so that's like sleep end of things and yeah i think that's the majority of the cheap stuff and we'll kind of get on to the more expensive and cool stuff now so we'll do the we'll do the tools first um i mean this is just a little towel nice to have a towel with you so if you shower or something they do have showers up there um a little multi-tool it's optional you don't need it but if you know if you're trying to be a little self-reliance you can um, you actually don't need that much in terms of stuff to go, um, in, in terms of like technical equipment, because a lot of it is there's fixed lines all the way up. You're never going to have to put down a fixed line. You might not even have to tie a rope at all. So we don't need to bring much accessory cord. This is like 50 feet of six millimeter. You only probably need like 30 to 40. I'm just bringing extra. You might need to like rig your harness or do anything like that. Um, so I don't need too much. And this is, I think just a three millimeter, um, the Garmin, the classic Garmin. Do I need to explain this a little at all? Not really. I don't think is it going to focus on me. There we go. Um, I have 10 texts on this, so I didn't, I didn't get the expedition program thing. I just have the satellite. I just use it for the satellite. And also if I go on my own adventures outside, I don't need to worry. So, um, ice axe. I don't know how much a Garmin in reach too many costs, but ice axe, the best part of all gear is the ice axe. It's just like when you get your first ice axe, it's so fun just whacking the snow with it. Um, I think it's 180, it's like 100 to $200. Um, yeah, recommend writing your name on your ice axe because a lot of people have the same ones, but basically these will save your life. So. It's life insurance. I've had to use it before. 
pretty i actually clutched up once i almost died not even kidding uh it was my fault of course i had like crampons that didn't fit my boot properly on denali it's a whole story i'll go into it one day probably but um yeah and, and they're fun honestly so um that's my favorite piece of gear in general is that um and then we have the little like thingies here i just call them thingies because tools little tools they're all tools they're not weapons they're tools but uh, it's a little weird exactly what you need on Everest for this type of stuff. You obviously need your ascender. So for the fixed lines, you have this little guy. Um, it bites into the rope. Rope goes through that tunnel. You can see through the top. It has little teeth on it. Boom. You can go up. You can't go down. So it'll keep you in place on the very steep places like the Lhotse face or just any time when you're on a steep slope and you don't want to fall but you want to go up and you want to secure your progress and i haven't used this before um they just we have we had a we had to get it it's, it's like i think it's like a figure eight belay it's like a belay device um same thing with this a re repel device use it to go down i believe this one i know this one you do but this one i think is something like that it obviously goes through the fixed lines um i think you use it way higher up so That'll be interesting. These, I don't know how much this was, probably like $50. Same with this, just little tools. These usually are around that, so. I could just be completely yapping about these prices, but I know it's all 20,000 plus because I can see how much I've spent on it total. I just don't know individual. Um, and I haven't used this before either. This is, I feel bad because I'm, I wanna give like names for this stuff. Um, I'm actually doing a horrible job of that. This is like Black Diamond. I use mostly, most of my stuff you'll see is from Black Diamond. Yeah, pretty much everything actually, except for this harness I'll show in a second. Um, I just like, they, they're just reliable, they, they make good stuff. Um, I believe this is also like a, a, I think you also use this too. I'm such a noob when it comes to stuff because when I like train, I'm literally training on, a small hill near my house, so I never like get this like technical stuff, even on Mount Washington. But I believe this is also to go down, um, and it helps you. It's like easy to adjust and everything. Yeah, 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 one hundred percent. It's like a sling, so something like that. I'm just yapping here, but yeah, um, this was like sixty dollars. I'll put it on screen what it is, and of course the harness which is like the Petzl Altitude Harness, I believe. Um, this thing is really good. It's very easy to just get into quick. You want something that's easy. Um, and also it has like its own little loop here that you'll attach your carabiners in and if you need to get, get things cooking. Um, I had a harness before. It was the Black Diamond um, something. It was like all black, but you had to like use two carabiners. Like instead of this, it was two carabiners that you had to use. So this is just way easier. Um, they do it for you. It's very lightweight and also it's orange. So if it's orange then people will find you if you're not doing well, um, black diamond helmet. I don't know. Just like it. Um, it's lightweight. I've never had to use it. I've never had anything hit my head, but I'm sure it would do fine. So, I don't know, probably like a hundred, hundred smackaroonies. And of course, the most important piece of equipment on the entire mountain is your crampons. So, these are kind of cool. They're basically these little things that go on your boots and you have spikes on the bottom so that you don't, um, you can actually dig into the ice when you, I got a little bit of rust right here, but um, you can dig into the ice, you won't fall and one thing you need to make sure is they do fit your boot because if you over boot you have to get an extender bar so i actually have to go to rei later to get one but um i think these are like 230 dollars they're black diamond saber tooths i should have said the name but uh no nah, they're, they're they're very good make sure you get the clip ones okay don't get the ones with the rope in the front unless if for some reason you need to but the clip ones go perfectly into your boot if it has a toe bail i'll show that in a second but um but yeah, honestly, solid crampons. I haven't had a problem with these with these types where they go over it. But I mean, either way, like Gravel's, Petzl's, all, all good choices. It, it, I mean, all, at the end of the day, it's 
really just all this stuff's quality, right? Nobody's giving you equipment that you're gonna die with. That would that would that wouldn't be good for a company to do. So it's all reliable, I would hope. Um, okay, that's kind of like the gear. Then we could go into the glove system real quick. So along with all the clothes, you also bring so much gloves. It's a lot. These are the biggest ones. That these are the mercury diamond black diamond mitts, um, and they're like two hundred dollars, I think. So they're, they're huge. Literally, you can like you have so much room in here. It's so warm. Keeps you nice and warm. So, bam. Um, that's the most. That's the heaviest mitt. So you'll use this when you're pushing to the summits, and kind of the the grade below that is these Hestra. Hestra, let me get the name real quick, so I'm not doing, um, I think that might be eight Hestra, I think, something like this, yes, but anyways, yeah, warmer ones, these are probably 150 or something, these are really good, very insulated, I'll also throw this on screen because I recommend these, um, they're like super lightweight, and you still have like a lot of dexterity with these. They look nice, they have a lot of overlap too, so you can strap over so there's no cold air getting into your hands still. You need, you can't be slacking on the gloves because if you lose anything, it's your fingers or your feet. Um, and then of course, we have the liners. Um, just use these whenever, cover your hands from the sun. If it's a little bit chilly, you'll use these. You can even mix them with the black diamond mitts if you really wanted to. These probably, Seventy dollars, I would say. So, yes, even the gloves. You're spending hundreds of dollars on gloves. Uh, what else do we got here? That, and we're kind of going up. Before, actually, before we get to those, because everything else is pretty expensive. This is where the bulk. So all the stuff I've probably shown, gear. Oh, wait, I didn't even show my trekking poles. Um, these are black diamond. You will find these. Trail, trail flick clock. I don't. I forgot the name of these, but if you look up black diamond tracking poles, you just look for this orange. I see people with them all the time. You'll be able to find them. But they're very solid. Um, you know, it's just how they usually work. You adjust. They come with snow baskets. I don't usually use the, the string thing because if you, like, fall, you don't want it flapping around. And you need to use your ice axe, perhaps. But, um, yeah, those are solid. I recommend those. Literally, black diamond orange tracking poles. You'll find those exact ones. So, other than that... I think that's majority of the light stuff. So gear, a um, thousand. Those clothes I show probably like two thousand. Um, the gloves. What else get us to like five? So we're probably at like five thousand with all the stuff I just showed. Yeah, I would say so. Seems about right. Now we'll get onto the more expensive things because the bigger. And warmer it gets, the more expensive it's going to be. So we'll actually start off with this pack. I just got this recently. Um, this is the Ospreay Mutants. I believe that's what it's called. It's a 38 liter pack. This is for the Trek In. Um, obviously, you know, we're not carrying every piece of gear. It's not an unsupported climb. We're going to have yaks carrying our stuff from where we start in Lukla to base camp. So... Um, 38 liters, I'll still probably try to fit like a lot of stuff in this anyways, but no, this, I haven't used it that much, I just got it recently, very solid, looks pretty nice, you just have one main pocket and some of these up here, this 250, I think it was, or maybe in the 300s, this wasn't too bad, it's a lighter pack, 38 liters isn't very much, but it's good for, good for a day hiking pack. Um, and we might as well go look at the other pack too. So now we're getting into the almost four digits. This is my favorite pack because of, I have just used it so much and it's also massive. 100 liter pack, which I guess if you're gonna do poundage, it's, it can hold more than 100 pounds for sure. But uh, the, the Gregory Denali, Denali 100. I did use this on Denali, it did go pretty well. Um, I use this on Aconcagua. I'll be using it on Everest. So it carries literally everything. It's massive. You have so many different pockets. You got the side straps, put stuff on that. Um, this, and uh, there's also the AMG 
hard, uh, AMG 105. There's literally not many packs above 100 liters. This is one of like the few you can go with. So this is the one I've personally used and the people that I've talked to that have it too, didn't have any problems with it. A thousand dollars, or is it 850? It's like 800 or more, it's pretty expensive. But of course it's, it's literally supports, can support up to more than 100 pounds. So, I mean, you're getting, you're getting what you need out of that. Um, so we just probably, we just did like a thousand right there. And then these are the boots. Now this is crazy. This actually doesn't include the other boots that I've bought in, which would even go further. But these boots um, are the Olympus Mons Cube. They say, they literally say they can go on Everest. Um, I meant, they're, they're called the Olympus Mons because you can literally look like you would use them on Mars. I would assume that's what their, their strategy was. But nah, they're huge. Look at these things. Pretty easy to get into. You can zip it down. You have this massive sleeve that goes over your foot, sort of. Keep it insulated. Um, and then also you'll notice that I was mentioning earlier, the crampons, they, they'll clip into this little toe bail thing. Um, and then into the back right there on that knot. So they're nice and secure. Want to make sure they fit properly. And yeah, so these are like 1200, 1200 for some boots. It's absolutely mad, but you, you know, you need them. It's the same thing with the gloves, right? You don't want your feet to end up dying. Um, so that was 1200. Okay. We're almost actually, we'll go here. So when you're on Everest or you're climbing it, so obviously you start in a pretty warm place and a lot of people don't really like think about that. It's like, Oh, well, you can't just spawn on the summit push, right? You have to you have to work your way up to base camp and everything. So you end up wearing two sleeping bags or sleeping in two sleeping bags. This is a Western mountaineering, um, I think it's called the Kodiak. It's about, I think I remember buying it for 700, but it's a 20, I think it's negative 20 degree sleeping bag. So it's a lot warmer of a sleeping bag. I don't want to take it out. It's just kind of like a gray sleeping bag. About $700. Lower elevations, we will be using this. And then I have the stuff sack for it over there. Um, and yeah, that's for the lower elevations. Um, I, I don't think you can buy these anymore. I had a hard time buying finding this one. I was told to buy it. And it was on the gear list for my coach. So... I found it. Uh, it was kind of difficult though. So that's 700 and moving up even more. We're not the most expensive item yet. This is the, um, this is like the third expensive most item. So this is kind of crazy. So I want you to sort of guess what this is. <laughs> so this is like, what is inside this? This thing is compressed down so much. That's why I'm not taking it out. Cause I don't want to compress it. Actually, you know, I'll, I'll take it out. So you'll see this small thing compressed. This is an $1,000 sleeping bag. So this is what you're gonna be using way, 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 way up high. The other one was for lower elevations. But it's compressed down. And this is the Phantom Mountain Hardware sleeping bag, negative 40. Um, and it's massive. Like the fact that you can squish this down is huge. Like, <laughs> Look how big it turns into. But this thing is nice and warm. Literally keeps you warm. Negative 40 degrees rated. So I believe that means if it's negative 40 degrees, then this will freeze. There's so much down feather in it. It will keep you warm in the nights. And that's huge because you need good sleep. And you don't want to freeze to death in your sleep. So, no, it's... I mean, you can just see this thing is massive. All that came out of that little thing. So that's the big thing about these little compression sacks. I'm just gonna put this over here for now. <coughs> um, basically what that was that was compressing it <coughs> is these little stuff sacks. That one has a lid that you can strap down and everything, but all this gear seems like a lot of space and it is. But when you have these things called compression sacks, you literally can just stuff everything inside and like, I can get like five jackets in, this, in just this. So like usually a jacket would, you know what I mean? Use the jackets inside of the stuff sack, everything in stuff sacks, and you can fit everything in two duffels. 
which is the goal. So, bam. So that sleeping bag, like I said, $1,000 uh, just about, I believe. And then, before I show the most expensive thing, I guess, because I guess that's what we're waiting for. Um, I actually want to show, because I should have shown this earlier. I just kind of forgot. Um, kind of what I bring for food, because it is a part of the gear, right? Uh, they will cook meals, the guides. We will have access to food and, and drinking water. This is a pee bottle. So you pee in this thing. At, at, it's too cold at night. So whoever your tent mate is, you literally just sit up and like pee inside one of these. Then you keep it in your sleeping bag so it doesn't freeze. It's kind of gross. But it is the game up there. Um, I have just a few main go-to few foods. And I've never had any problems. So instead of gels, which I really don't like gels, it's a lot of artificial stuff. Um, I use these like zest fruit leathers. I use these on my runs. I use these on anything that have like 80 calories. It's just these little bars. It's literally apples, lemon squash, and whatever the flavor is. It's like this one's blackberry. Hold it upside down, let's go. This one's blackberry, they taste so good. I love these and it's, it's natural. It's not, it's like my form of candy. People bring candy up there, but I don't believe in that. I don't believe in it. I'll do my fruit leathers. And everyone makes fun of me for it. And then besides that, I'm a big RX bar guy. I will literally... I stick true to the idea that you can live off of RX bars. Three egg whites, focus. Three egg whites, six almonds, four cashews, and two dates. Everything, healthy fats, carbs, protein. You can live off of these 200 calories. I've eaten, I think my record is like 10 of these in a day, which was on one of my like 12 hour hiking days. I don't get sick of them. You just have to force them down, switch up the flavor. There's a bunch of different flavors. My favorite, strawberry, mixed berry, and the chocolate sea salt is good because you need salt for electrolytes up there. And then another thing that I've just recently started Loving a lot is these Hue. Um, it's like dark chocolate, but they have really good flavors. It's 70% 70, 70 cocoa, but it's every other ingredient is really good. Um, no refined sugar. Like it doesn't matter what the 70% co cocoa is because a lot of companies just throw in sugar to make up for it. Hue is really good. And their stuff's biodegradable, so if you care about that. I do these little Fit Aids. I love Fit Aids. They're another thing that I drink a lot. Um, it's these little recovery supplement things. There's no, there's no, no like supplements, it's not like creatine. I do bring creatine as well, rebuild. Um, I just put it in bags and then hope that it has enough until I'm done. But um, these are basically just like, they help you recover, they restore electrolytes and a lot of vitamins that you definitely won't be getting up there. So I see like the, you know, not bringing maybe a pound or so of more food or actually the extra weight, that's a better way to describe it. Don't not bring as much food, just bring extra. Um, especially in any scenario, you might think like, oh, I don't wanna bring a pound of food because it'll weigh me down. Like, no, like you need to bring all the food you need um, or else you're gonna bonk. So I see it worth it as extra to bring the creatine, bring the supplements, just a couple extra pounds. Yeah, it does add up, but um, I see it as worth it. And the last thing is just collagen. Um, which is pretty popular anyways. It's just vital protein collagen, so that's literally it. I'll just bring RX bars, fruit leathers, dark chocolate, and then supplements. I don't even care. And yeah, so I guess we'll move on to the big boy here. We've looked at everything else, and this is the Hamali Down Suit. This thing is absolutely gigantic. Like, I'm all the way over here, and I'm, I'm seeing it on the camera. So you're just an astronaut in this thing. This was $2,000 on its own. $2,000. It's taller than me, just like me standing up next to it. Um, but basically it's, it's filled with the down feathers to make it warm enough. The most you can get, like even, even like, it's a pretty light to be honest. But um, yeah, you literally hop in. You have to hop in and then pull the whole thing over. I think this back zipper, I haven't used it yet obviously. 
I think you're supposed to use this to go to the bathroom. Or you literally have a zipper in the back. Like, that's insane. That's how, that's how intense this thing is that you need to go. You can't take it off to go to the bathroom when it's so high up there that you literally have to unzip a back compartment. That is just insane. Um, and, the, and the crazy thing is that it'll also squeeze down into a stuff sack just like my sleeping bag. So that is probably around, everything I just showed is definitely 12,000-ish. I know I said 20,000, but um, I have spent 20,000 on gear. It's just I'm not bringing all my gear to Everest. For instance, um, the company that I'm going with will have jackets for us, so I'm not bringing this, this down jackets, uh, which is a lighter one compared to the um, Giants one I also just showed. Um, actually, I forgot to show one thing. I don't know how I forgot this. It's because it's literally underneath a giant freaking thing. Um, I use Himali for most of my jackets. So this is the my big parka. It's a like 850 fill or something. Wait, no, it's more than that. Anyways, I think this is like literally $500. But Himali is pretty expensive, but it's like very warm. Um, this is kind of the level below that massive down suit I just showed. So anyways, what I was trying to say is I don't bring all the gear that I purchased. I have two more sets of boots, which probably puts another $2,000 on. Um, of course, I've bought in stuff that I've lost. Carabiners. I actually didn't even show my carabiners. Basically just like um, these little metal things. Kind of run you up, actually. These are probably like a couple hundred dollars, honestly. But um, basically I have five locking and then four non-locking. You don't need that much. This isn't too technical of a mound. But anyways, yeah, there's stuff that I've bought and that I'm not bringing or I've lost. Snowshoes somewhere in Alaska. I don't know where they are now. Jacket somewhere in Alaska. Never got it back. <laughs> but um, it's probably around like 20000 So if you're trying to go from like nothing to Everest, you can expect to spend around $20,000 on gear. Um, or just if you're trying to go on any major climbing expedition. And... I'd say it's worth it because not even just for this expedition, but I'm gonna, if I, I, I want to climb for the rest of my life, I'm going to be using this stuff. These boots are going to last me years. Like this stuff is going to last. I use these jackets just any time. Um, Garmin, is, it's all stuff that you need. Helmet, crampons, we could have a nuclear winter or something and then you need to, you need to do some cramponing. So yeah, 20,000, that's that. Thanks for watching.